Light on landscape shoots rarely plays ball. In fact, you can almost guarantee that the moment you remove the lens cap, light levels will change, making exposure difficult and will often result in areas of the frame being overexposed, especially if you are attempting a long exposure and are working in manual mode. Uneven exposure levels can present sizable ramifications for the professional photographer, as these issues could impact the sellability of the image, hitting your bottom line. Fear not though, Affinity Photo 2 offers a multitude of solutions to balancing up your exposure levels and this technique will drill down into one particular route that allows for a huge amount of precision. So you can take full control and only adjust areas of the frame that you really want to change. The key to this precision is working with the gradient tools and mask options in Affinity Photo 2, both of which are often overlooked features that are powerful and can help professionals completely transform a frame. So how does this technique come together? With your image open in Affinity Photo 2, make sure you are in the Photo Persona. If not, just click on the Photo Persona icon in the top left of the interface. Our first task is to add a new layer to our layer stack so we can start adding elements over the top of our background image. To do this, head to the top of the interface and find the layer menu. Scroll down and select new layer. You'll see the new layer has been added to our layers panel and is automatically selected ready for us to work on. So the next job is to head over to the toolbar and find the gradient tool. We're going to click and drag from the top of the frame and you'll notice by default that at the top it's set to white and the bottom is set to black, which is actually the reverse of what we need. So we're going to head to the reverse gradient button, click on this and you'll see that the black is at the top and the white is at the bottom, which is what we need for this image. Now there's only a bit of black here and quite a lot of white, so we need to fine tune the gradient, but this can be quite hard at the moment. So what we're going to do is change the opacity of this layer, pulling the opacity bar to the left, and you'll see our background image start to seep through so we can see what's going on. Next up, we're going to find the midpoint slider on the gradient line, and we can drag this to increase the area of black so that it covers our sky and a bit of the sea here. Obviously, this will be dependent on your image, but for my frame, this looks quite good. Remember to increase the opacity back up to 100%. So this is where the real magic with this technique happens. By default, your blending mode will be set to normal, but we're going to change this to either overlay or soft light. Now, overlay gives a much harder effect. Soft light is a little more gentle, and I think that's right for my image. So I'm going to click on soft light. Again, if this is still too heavy, you can head back up to the opacity bar and scroll down and lighten the effect. But for my image, I think 100% is working quite well. Now, because with the gradient, we had black at the top and white at the bottom, you'll see this has lightened the bottom of my frame almost to the point of overexposure, and I need to fix this. So I'm going to head back to the layers panel and find the mask option, which is identified by a circle within a square. Click on it and you'll see the thumbnail appear next to your layer. Head back to the toolbar at the left-hand side of the interface, and this time select the paintbrush tool, and the keyboard shortcut for this is B. You can change the size of the brush with your square bracket keys, make sure the brush is set to black, and that the hardness of the brush is set to 0%. When you're ready, you can start to paint out the pixels you want to remove. And you can see the bottom of the frame getting darker, returning to a more normal exposure. If you make a mistake, you can simply change the brush to white and paint these pixels back in, but this works pretty well for my image. If you'd like to increase the effect even more, you can click Command and J, and this will duplicate the layer. If needs be, you can lower the opacity again to balance things out, but I think for my image, just the one gradient layer is enough. So, let's see our start image. With the sky slightly overexposed and not much detail here. And look what a difference the gradient layer has made. Balancing the exposure of the frame and giving us a high precision of the pixels we want to remove. 
All that's left is to head up to File, scroll down to Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. There we go. Have fun controlling the exposures in your landscape images, and I'll see you next time.